Hassan. Fuadi are back on Behind the Gloves with another interview. After a long time, I'm joined by the one and only Eddie Hearn. First of all, Eddie, how's things? How are you keeping? I'm loving your lockdown, Barney, mate. That's on another level. I know. I tried cutting yeah. my own hair, but it didn't, it didn't really work. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, good, mate. No, all's good. All's good. Back, back to it now. Awesome. We have to jump straight into it. We've not got much time today, but the big news that broke yesterday was obviously about Jarrell Miller's. Um, once again, he's failed a drugs test. The same thing, I think it was the GW1516, whatever it's called. Um, initially, what was your reaction to that? I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. I mean, there's been a lot of sort of rumours about Jarrell Miller. You know, when he, when, he, when he busted himself for that last AJ fight with three substances, you know, three tests, a lot of people said, oh, he's been at it for years, you know? And you kind of hope that he hasn't or he wasn't. But to come off that and be under such scrutiny and have what is really supposed to be a warm-up fight against Jerry Forrest, and to do that again shows me, actually, I feel sorry for him because I think he has a psychological problem mm. and I don't think he can bring himself to fight without taking pets. Right, yeah. and that's really sad, and that it worries me that that might have been the case his whole career. You know, he was always tested, but the only time that he was tested properly, as in you know stringently, was in the AJ fight. You know, and we saw the results of that. Now he's been tested again, fairly properly, and he's been busted straight away. So I think he needs help. His career's over. You know, I mean, I, I think when you look at it, his career only wasn't over before because top rank gave him the opportunity to fight and a big contract. And the Nevada Commission licensed him to fight. The difference is he was never banned by a commission because he didn't have a, a license when he failed his test in New York. So now the Nevada Commission have an opportunity to ban him, which they will. And probably the other commissions will follow suit. You may find a commission that in time will let him fight. But I don't think any credible promoter will ever let him fight again. <clears throat> so we're going to move on. Obviously, that was just the first reaction to that. But just like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, you've got your own little thing going on in the back garden. I'm glad boxing's back. Uh, we've got a great uh, few weeks of boxing. But the one I want to talk about and mainly touch on is the final week. And Amanda Sorano and Katie Taylor, obviously, that was meant to happen May 2nd. There's no confirmation of that happening yet. There's been a lot said on Twitter. First of all, I want to take your sort of understanding of what Amanda, Amanda said about... Um, her, about the date changing, that didn't really make sense to me. Uh, she was complaining about how it was changed from May 2nd to... I was like, wait, but we've been in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that that's just really a way of sort of arguing that she's not compelled to fight Katie Taylor. Mm. Of course she is. You know, she signed a contract herself. Luda Bella signed a contract. And within that contract, in the event of a force majeure or situation like we're in, we have the, the legal right to reschedule that fight. Yeah. What happened was the fight was originally scheduled for May the 2nd. Of course, the world went crazy. We said to Luda Bella, look, we're going to try and do the fight in July. Obviously, the world was still going crazy. And then he was contacted last week with a confirmation of August the 22nd with the full purse. Now, Lou says, you know, you did talk to me about trying to get... A yes, I did, of course. We're in a situation, we've got no gate. And I did talk, say to him at times, you know, do you think there will be... A he, she would take a reduction in purse. He made it very clear that she wouldn't. So I had to give her the full purse as per the contract for August the 22nd. The bigger issue here, and this is probably something that people might have picked up or might not have, is that in between this period, another broadcaster, Telemundo in Puerto Rico, um, offered, her a, offered her a space in this reality TV show on a private island, on a private jet, you know, with a, with a okay. appearance fee. And she just, wanted, she just wanted to do that rather than fight. And I said, no. Because you don't know the history. The history is, I gave her a shot at a, a vacant title mm -hmm. at Madison Square Garden. I gave her the Heather Hardy fight. Now, all these fights are to get her to take the Katie Taylor fight. Yeah. When she signed for the Katie Taylor fight, I gave her a warm-up fight in Miami in January, which I really didn't want to do, but I did. And by the way, guess what? I also gave her an advance on her purse to fight Katie Taylor. So she's been treated extremely fairly. She's making an absolute fortune to fight Katie Taylor. And Katie Taylor took the pay cut on, on, on her behalf to make yeah. the fight. So Luda Bella's quite right. You know, oh, she, you can't force her to fight. Of course, you can never force someone to fight. What you can do is stop someone from interfering in your contract, like another broadcaster, making her change her mind to go and sit on a private island instead. 
So if you want legacy, if you want the money, you've got eight weeks to go till August the 22nd. And please don't use the excuse to say, oh, I can't train here in the state of New York. Because guess what? Katie Taylor's in the state of New York and she's training and preparing for a fight. So it's extremely frustrating. You know, by the way, you need to understand it's not Amanda Serrano tweeting for her account. It's the manager, Jordan Maldonado. So I don't take it out on her as much. But the people around her don't really tell her the, the right story. I don't think Lou DeBella's done anything wrong. But he's dealing with a situation like, well, I don't have to fight. I said, well, we've got the right to reschedule. So, but don't you want the fight? She's still got eight weeks, just under eight weeks. Yeah. Take the fight. There's no excuse. So, we'll see what happens. I don't see her taking the fight now. But. I'm intrigued to see, who, even if she doesn't take the fight, what's going to be next for Katie. And uh, there's been talks of a Delphine Pursuit rematch mm. in the garden. Is that, that's, that's one for a lot of people would be that's interested amazing in the, fight. In the Look, arena. To be honest with you, both of the fights, Serrano and Pursuit, mm. you know, you'd love to do them in front of crowds in, in a yeah. big arena, but we have a massive show on August the 22nd, and I want her in a big fight. So mm. we're in a situation where um, we've offered Pursuit a deal for the fight, more money than she got for the first fight, um, which she deserves because it was an amazing fight. Um, if that doesn't happen next, we've been told by the WBA that she must face a mandatory, which is Maria Gutierrez, who's a 15-0 uh, interim world champion from Spain. And we will make the Pursuit fight next. There is no question, if we don't get Pursuit for August 22nd, she will be next. And we'll do everything we can to make that fight. But I'm not doing anything with any of those till Amanda Serrano confirms her position of, will you take this fight? The one that you signed up for, the one that you've taken an advance for, the one that you've got all these other warm-up fights for, and the one you're getting a load of money for, and the one that will cement your legacy as, as a great. So we shall see. And last question. We've, we've obviously seen a lot go off with between uh, Fury and White in the last couple of days on Twitter. Um, obviously, Dylan's the mandatory and has been the number one for a heck of a long time before I had this crap on it. Uh, but a lot's been said between the two and a lot's been said with the WBC. And uh, people are saying that the WBC are thinking about making Fury a franchise champion, which, again, we've spoke about this, would leave Dylan in the dark, um, him winning a vacant title or email title, or whatever you want to call it. If he does, it means that the AJ fight is for the diamond title, right? If, if AJ wins the Fury fight, it, it's going to be for... The, he's not going to win the WBC. He's going to... Yeah, he can't win yeah. the franchise title. As um, his promoter and, and, and AJ's team, surely you wouldn't want that fight then if, 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 if the actual WBC isn't on the line. Well, we would always want the fight because AJ wants to prove who's the best heavyweight in the world. So the aim of this fight is to be for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. But we also understand Dillian White must get his shot. Alexander Usyk must get his shot. You know, there's all these mandatories queuing up and lining up. So we've got to navigate around that. But I'm not going to navigate around it so that people are disrespected or not given the right opportunity. So Dillian White must be priority for Tyson Fury because that's the ruling within the WBC. On your question, you're quite right. I don't want Anton to fight the franchise championship. In fact, you can't win the franchise championship, can you? No, he'll, so, win, a, he'll win the diamond, wouldn't he? If, if he yeah, be. but no. He's got to fight got the to WBC undisputed. world champion. We want it for the undisputed. And by the way, Dillian White doesn't want an email to say that he's now WBC world heavyweight champion. Because yeah. it wouldn't even be his fault. And you just get sick, don't you? Look at Devin Haney. Devin Haney worked himself into a position to be mandatory for Vasily Lomachenko. When he got there, the WBC said, right, you're going to franchise. Haney, you can't touch Lomachenko. But good news, you're now world champion. Yeah. He's still getting a stick from that move that had nothing to do with it. We didn't request that Lomachenko had become champion. Top rank did. <coughs> and top rank will request that Tyson Fury becomes franchise champion. But, you know, Dillian White's got to get his shot at the title. Not a free title, the shot of the title. He's not asking for anything for free. He's got to fight Alexander Povetkin first here, the yeah. fight camp on August 22nd. So we must make sure that we push, get the Povetkin fight won, and make sure he gets his shot. And by the way, I haven't heard anything from Deontay Wilder. Is he even fighting Tyson Fury? He's been very, very quiet. And if he don't want to fight Tyson Fury, if he's not ready, if he's injured, if he's not happy with what his 40% equates to, yeah. let Gillian White jump in. December. Awesome. All right, Eddie, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and we'll catch up soon. No worries, mate. Take care. Thank you. Bye.
Hey Fi fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you go ahead and do so by clicking this icon right here and hit the bell button so you can get notified every time we upload a new video. And we also have a free app available on iTunes and Google Play. So make sure you go ahead and download that. Bye Fi fans.